living at both sides, that of the victims and that of the killers, I keep asking myself, what are the means by which good Israeli children are turned into murder, murdering monsters? What are the means by which they are so mind-infected as to kill and torture and humiliate other children, their parents and grandparents, and sacrifice their own lives for nothing but the folly and megalomania of their chiefs? In the so-called Western enlightened world, everyone feels very well-founded when they blame Islam for suicide bombing and terror. But who would ever blame Judaism for murder? And yet, ultra-Orthodox Jewish children who have never left Brooklyn know that to kill Arabs is a mitzvah, holy commandment, for they are wilde chayas, wild beasts. And Israeli children actually commit the crimes of slaughter and torture. However, neither Judaism nor Islam or any religion for that matter are the cause for murder and terror. Racist education is, American imperialism is, and Israeli ruthless regime of occupation is. The women and children who suffer most from Western violence today are Muslim women, but racism has its way and the blame for the suffering is attributed to their being Muslim. The Western world today is infected with fear of Islam and especially of the Muslim womb. Great France of Liberté, Égalité and Fraternité is scared of little heads carved girls. Jewish Israel calls in public speeches and school books the Arab citizens of Israel a demographic nightmare and the enemy from within. As for the Palestinian refugees living under occupation, they are defined in Israeli history school books as a problem to be solved. Not long ago, the Jews were a problem to be solved. This in spite of the fact that the people who are destroying the world today are not Muslim. The people who are using the most sophisticated, disastrous weapons to kill thousands and thousands of innocent civilians are not Muslim. They are Christian and Jewish. Nevertheless, people who belong to the Judeo-Christian cultures, who support American, British and Israeli crimes against humanity, and particularly against Muslims all over the world, people who send their children to fight these ruthless, useless wars in the name of democracy and freedom, which are cover names for greed and megalomania, dare call themselves enlightened and blame it all on some imaginary clash of civilizations. What does this fear-struck world offer as a solution to Palestinian, Iraqi, or Afghan people who are harassed, abused, tortured, and famished by Western crimes and exploitation? The general offer this enlightened world gives them is, be like us, constitute a democracy like ours, embrace our values which despise you, which consider you an inferior primitive lot to be cultivated or cleansed away. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the attitude that permits American soldiers to rape, torture, and kill Muslim men and women and children by the thousands. That permits Israeli soldiers to order Palestinian women and children to strip in front of their mates and family for security reasons that permits jailers to keep them in inhuman condition without necessary hygienic aids, without clean water or clean mattresses, and separate women from their breastfed babies and toddlers, to block children's way to education, to confiscate their land, to destroy their water wells, to uproot their trees, and to prevent them from working in their fields, as we saw in the movie. This is what permits Israeli pilots to drop a hundred bombs of one ton a day on the most crowded area in Gaza, in the world, which is Gaza, and call it targeted assassinations. This is what permits Israel to issue racist laws that separate mothers from fathers and parents from children. Palestinian, Iraqi, and Afghan women are mothers like me. And when they lose a child, even if it is one of 12, their pain is equal to mine. 
But in addition to losing their children, they also lose their homes and their livelihood and their future. Because the world does not listen to their sufferings and does not punish their murderers. Moreover, the world condones these murders. Their honor as women and mother is crushed, their identity is destroyed, and their cry is not heard. Their faith and customs, their centuries-old ways of life are disregarded and despised. Not only American soldiers, but also Israeli soldiers who actually perform massacres on Arabs, Palestinian, or Lebanese may never see an Arab human face until they are drafted to the army. But they learn for 12 long years that these people are primitive, bear children in order to send them to the street and throw stones at our peacekeeping soldiers, uneducated because they don't receive our education, conniving and dirty because they have different notions about politeness, they dress differently and cover their heads with different pieces of cloth. Well, from my experience, there are many more kafiyas in the camp of peace lovers than there are kippahs. Israeli children are deprived from knowing their immediate neighbors, their history and their culture and their merits. Israeli children are educated to see their neighbors as an unwanted element. This is not education, this is mind infection. The scientist Richard Dawkins was the first to speak about viruses of the mind. He said that children, because their minds are gullible, are open to almost any suggestion, are not immune to mental infections of all sorts of propaganda and fashion. They are easily persuaded to pierce their faces and tattoo their bottoms, to turn their hats around and bear their bellies, to believe in angels and tooth fairies. They are equally easy to acquire political beliefs and to appropriate mental maps, which will later influence the decision on the question of the future borders of the state and the necessity of war. All of our children are mind infected from an early age, so that by the time they are old enough to become soldiers, they, are already, they have already learned to be good soldiers which means their minds are totally infected and they are incapable of questioning the truth that has been inculcated to them. This is part of the explanation one can give to the terrible deeds that are committed today by good Israeli boys who are characterized once and again as people of values. Therefore, it is high time to ask, what values are these? The following lines, that you will see on slides are from a, a preface of a term paper written by one of my students. In this term paper, he had to analyze a history textbook, and this is what he wrote. You see? I shall also read it. On the 5th of September, 1997, I found myself in Lebanon on a rescuing mission. All my friends were in the battle. Twelve soldiers were killed. The following days I was happy. I'm alive. I survived, I said to myself. However, a year later, I was in deep depression, sad and morose. I decided to consult a psychologist. After a few sessions, I was able to gather up my forces again, both physical and moral. I could recognize my thoughts. I could uh, so, reorganize my thoughts. Then I understood that the mental crisis I had was in fact a moral crisis, a crisis of consciousness. What I actually felt was frustration, shame, and anger. How could I be so gullible and let myself be duped? How can I explain that a man of peace exposes himself to such a morbid experience of his own free will? Today, like every two weeks, I drove peace activists to the military checkpoints of the Israeli army in the occupied Palestinian territories. I saw an officer put tight handcuffs on a taxi driver because he failed to obey the soldier's order to park here and not there. We told him a thousand times, the soldier said. The man was lying on the ground in the worst heat of the summer, thirsty for hours on end. His friend was luckier he had to stand on his feet in a cell without handcuffs. What pushes these young Israeli boys to play the role of supreme judges until they lose all judgment? 
In my opinion, it is the grand Zionist narrative which serves as a collective conscience to the whole Israeli society, explicitly as well as implicitly. The grand narrative is the system of values that makes us belong to this particular collective. This is the system that dictates the relationships between us and the Palestinians. How else one can, can one explain young people who were educated to love the neighbor as they love themselves, killing the neighbors, destroying their educational institutions, the libraries and the hospitals for no apparent reason other than their being neighbors? The only explanation is that their mind are infected by parents, teachers and leaders who convince them that the others are not as human as we are and therefore killing them is not real killing. It has other legitimating names such as cleansing, purifying, punishment, operation, mission, campaign and war. Although I speak about Israeli boys, this is not an Israeli affair because as you know, the epidemic is worldwide. My nephew Doroni, seven years old, who lives in the US, came home on Halloween day and said he wanted to be a soldier, go to Iraq and save America. How many American young men, ignorant as he is of the absurdity of this statement, actually went to Iraq and died there without knowing why, with the word save America on their lips? The question is, how were these false values imprinted on their minds and how can they be erased? The human psyche, says Dawkins, has two great sicknesses. The urge to carry vendetta across generations and the tendency to fasten group labels on people rather than see them as individuals. Jews, Muslim, Christian. We all suffer because of labels, but only those of us who died because of labels have realized that labels kill. The only way to fight labels is to refuse labels. The only way to defeat false value systems is to expose them. The viruses of the mind are only partially weakened by young people like Tal, my student, and other Israeli refuseniks such as combatant for peace. But most of our mind-infected children could not be free of the grip of those viruses until they find a final rest in the ever-growing underground kingdom of dead children. Only there will they realize that it doesn't matter whether your, their head was bare or not in a synagogue or a church or a mosque, whether they were circumcised or not, whether they pronounced forbidden words, ate pig or cow, or whether they had a hot chocolate after their salami pizza just before they were blown up by someone who didn't. Israeli, American, English, Italian mothers raised their children with all the love and care in order to sacrifice them to the God of death as if their uterus is a national or rather international asset. And father urged their children to commit themselves to armies whose interests have nothing to do with defense. And when these children die for the profits of somebody else, their parents bear it with dignity and pride, as they were taught. And they put the, de the dead children's photograph on the mantelpiece and sigh, he was so handsome in uniform. It is time to tell these parents that no one is handsome in the uniform of brutality.